Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And lately I've been really interested in liminal spaces, which are basically any space where people pass through and spend some time but don't actually live long term. And it got me thinking, what would a character look like who lives permanently in a liminal space? I think you guys know where this is going. Uh, this first liminal space that I was inspired by is, I, at first I thought it was an arcade, but now I think it might be a movie theater. Um, this is a great example of a liminal space. It's a place where you pass through, and that's what liminality really means. It's like a, uh, you know, like a passageway between one state to another, and so in spaces it really refers to things like hallways and, um, you know, hotel rooms, airports, that kind of thing. Uh, so for this character, I really, really wanted him to perfectly match the vibe of this place. Um, like a lot of people, I find certain liminal spaces to be kind of creepy, um, and this one is no exception. I do think uh, there's something very comforting about how nostalgic it is though, so even though this is going to be a bit of a like monsterish kind of a design, I'm also going to try to make him um, look a little comforting in his own way as well. Uh, this time I did the sketch and then blocked out the color choices that I wanted to use just because, again, I really wanted to make him match the environment perfectly. Um, I thought about originally making this video just like turning environments into characters, but then I became so fixated on liminal spaces that it kind of became more specific. Um, so he's definitely a bit of a weird character here, um, somewhere between a character design and a monster design. Uh, I wanted to mirror the, uh, the red squares somewhere on his person. So of course I um, decided to do that on his face, which I made sort of like a tube TV uh, style. Um, and he only has three fingers counting his thumb for some reason. It was something I did in the rough silhouette and then I just kind of liked it, so we're keeping it. Um, and I want his body to be mainly dark, uh, like the color of the theater. Uh, and then I want pops of this like beautiful glowing neon. Um, there are some easy ways to make a neon effect in digital art programs, um, so I'll take you guys through that when we get to it. Um, and I wanted to make it so that I can only pick colors from the actual reference image. I thought that would be a fun limitation, so you'll see me eyedroppering um, the environments over and over because that's, that's I guess, just something I decided to do. Uh, now you can see how I'm doing this. I'm actually duplicating the lines I want to be neon and then I'm changing them to the uh, like lighter color that's at the core um, and I'm just using a slight blur effect to give it that like the blur that you see in neon um, and it works really effectively you can play around with like hard light or soft light layers it will probably make it even more convincing but you really don't even need to with the proper colors in a Gaussian blur um, so this character, I imagine, sort of just scutters around and lives in the theater and only comes out when nobody's watching. Um, he wears an, a little, like, tuxedo jacket thing with tails that is the exact same fabric as the carpet on the floor. I took the straight blue neon um, pieces up at the top and curved them along his boot as well as his ribs and thigh. Um, I just wanted there to be sort of accents there with the shape of the body. He has quite an unusual silhouette um, and I really wanted to feature that. Uh, I imagine that he just uh, lives on movie theater popcorn and only comes out uh, when the theater closes um, and he just kind of lives in the vents watching movies and and, um, you know, eating stray M&Ms off the floor and whatnot. Um, and I imagine personality-wise, he's like pretty shy, obviously. He's a bit of a cryptid, um, but a huge movie lover and um, definitely, <laughs> definitely has some, some strange secrets that you might uncover. So just to check how to see how well I did with this, I actually put him in the environment and I think he blends really well. This looks quite interesting. Next up for a completely different style of liminal space, we have a school hallway at night. Um, this is a particularly eerie looking one because it's all pink. Um, I almost think this one is like edited or maybe even a 3D render. I took all of these photos from the liminal space bot on Twitter, um, <laughs> but uh, this one threw me for a loop at first. I definitely wanted to think about 
I mean, my, my first gut reaction was obviously a student, um, but then I really started thinking about like, who would be living at the school, like living inside of it. Like the whole point is that students leave the school. So um, after a while, I kind of scrapped my initial sketches, which were gonna be like a schoolyard ghost, um, and instead went with a janitor. Uh, she's sort of a janitor, ghoul, specter, um, grim reaper type. Um, and so she has this scythe that attaches to a moth. And generally, I just wanted her to have a slightly uh, swoopier and more like a lot more curves in the design of like her dress and everything, um, just to like counterbalance the more angular character that I had initially. Um, I decided to make her face like a rose just because of the pink colors that we are working with in this particular space. And um, I thought it'd be really cool if like when she looks around, like, like the core of the rose is the part that moves around. Um, it's hard to really explain, but um, I think it would look really cool animated. Um, and I decided to add some of that like schoolgirl look, um, but in an unusual way. So I gave her sort of like this little capelet that looks like a traditional like school uniform skirt. Um, I just thought it would be kind of an interesting way to apply it. And then other than that, she kind of looks like a scullery maid. Um, I almost thought about her maybe being a the ghost of a scullery maid who always wanted to go to school. So she's now haunting this um, school hallway and just working as the janitor after everyone leaves um, and she has yeah like this sort of cute apron it's supposed to like it's very square so it's well rectangular so it's supposed to kind of look like that pink strip um, down the center of the hallway and um, she just has some like knee-high boots again I'm trying to kind of take like an academic look to it without it just being a straight-up school uniform just because I felt like that was a little too easy and then on her boots instead of like buckles I have the like plus sign minus sign <laughs> multiplication and division sign and then on the other boots a b c d um, for obvious reasons <laughs> and um, really my whole inspiration with this character was just to try to think of something that would look really good with these colors as well as just sort of capture the energy I get from these. I think what's so interesting about these liminal spaces is that while there's nothing inherently like creepy about them, like a liminal space doesn't have to be creepy, there is like there's a weird feeling to these to these places like if you've ever been in uh your school like after you graduated or um after hours it does have a completely different feeling it feels like you're not supposed to be there so i think that's part of the reason why uh these spaces can feel almost sort of like horror or creepy kind of oriented <laughs> um, so again i'm just color picking all of these colors and they're really quite lovely we're working with some like warm peachy kind of colors from the lockers and then more like bubblegum pink or like a very very warm beige kind of color um and she was really easy to color because i i love these colors I used a soft watercolor to actually do the shading um, and I tried to put in some locker slats into the top of her scythe just so that it felt a little bit more like it's actually you know part of this reference from this and I did a little sketch of her looking around with her rose eye so you'd understand what I meant earlier um, here she is in her space again I think she blends pretty well though I think the way I placed her makes her look a little too tall but other than that I'm pretty happy with it Last but certainly not least is the creepiest of the bunch. Um, this image really scares me. I'm someone who's extremely claustrophobic and I think my worst fear is being like trapped below ground. Um, and so this image really freaks me out, but I definitely wanted to do it because it has such strong presence. It is this underground cave. It looks like somebody took the picture with just the light of a flashlight. Um, and you can see there's a Tory gate um, <laughs> here for some reason, which gives it an extremely ominous kind of feeling. There's also like lanterns. It really looks like it would just take you to another world um, if you stepped through that gate. Uh, and so, yeah, it was very, very exciting to try to make a character based on this. Um, I definitely wanted to have that sort of like, uh, the eeriness. Um, I wanted this to be my like scariest character. Um, and so I had a couple different design ideas. I definitely wanted that like horn sharpness that's at the top of the Tory gate. Um, and I ended up doing this sort of like, it almost kind of gives me a Dark Souls kind of vibe um, where it's sort of this like just dark shape. Um, 
and uh, then he has like these really distinct like wood carvings kind of over his face um, as well as the lanterns kind of float out uh, almost like wings over his shoulders. I wanted him to be a lot bulkier than my other two characters because I think um, both my <laughs> my janitors looking quite delicate and even in a certain sense my theater creature is also looking kind of delicate so I wanted this character to have a bit more presence. Um, I tried to bulk him up a little bit um, and uh, just really create these kind of uh, interesting shapes with the uh, like tunicky kind of outfit he's wearing. It's almost kind of inspired by Yukata but not really. Um, it's mostly just like this wrapped um, ghostly sort of outfit and then he sort of tapers down to nothing at the feet. Um, again this is the one I wanted most to look like a ghost. Um, the other two could easily just be like straight up uh, physical creatures but this is definitely like because of how ominous the original image is this is definitely the most ghostly of all of them i used that cool border trick um that you can do on clip studio to actually draw out the uh the gate in front of his face um and it made it really easy uh, and i wanted the fingers to just look super wispy super weird and scary and floaty um, and i think it turned out pretty well the color picking was the hardest part of this and i knew i was gonna have to make some edits when i actually put him in the space because the flashlight is such a strong light source um, that there was no way without knowing where he was going to be placed uh, for me to know how to sort of compensate for that but luckily it was a relatively simple thing to do um so i just basically did some normal drop shading on his like robe thing. Um, I used that watercolor brush again uh, and I just basically tried to show the texture of the fabric without worrying about the light source too much because I knew it was going to be uh, such a strong factor that I was just gonna have to worry about it once he was placed. Um, honestly I, I wanted this one to be the scariest but weirdly by the time he was finished he gave me kind of a, a comforting vibe again. I don't know if I just like monster designs or what um, but he almost seems kind of like big brotherly like he would help you out of the cave not try to keep you there forever despite my best efforts to make him look scary maybe that's just me let me know how he makes you feel um but i ended up giving him a hobby of knitting i feel like he's a diy king he just loves um, doing sort of little meticulous things down here with all his free time um and i feel like yeah like he would guide uh, confused tourists out of the cave. So that's kind of how I see his personality. Um, so here he is in the space. As you can see, I added some shadow um, beneath his little spindle feet um, and a little bit of like some flashlight lighting up the edge of his sort of tunic thing. So yeah, there he is. Here are all my liminal monsters. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thanks to all of my patrons, including Avant Grape, Gender Was Stolen, Edward Averill, Haley, Beezleboo, First Spookable, Vagish, Ah, it's Jamal! Kay, Rodrigo, Kubo, Moonwalk, Kadaria, Something Super, Deadly Nightshade Art, Maria Vasquez, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Lily Allure, the Expressive Poker Face, Morrissey Axolotl, Tsubaki, Michael Lavallee, Cutie Pie, Ruin Rain Crow, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, Insadnia, Your Boy ST, JJ Jade, and of course, Libla Blah Blah. blah, blah.